It is Commissioner's Week here on Midwest Sportsnet, and we're going to have the privilege to get to visit with a number of Division II and NAI commissioners for athletic conferences around the country. It's a privilege today to get to start things off with Corey Westra with the Great Plains Athletic Conference. And Commissioner, uh, fantastic to have you on the program. I know we've had a chance to visit once before. That was a few years back. So things have changed, and I believe for the better over the course of the last few years. But I'd like for you to start us off then and Tell us, what what do you see as your role as a commissioner of an athletic conference? Yeah, Joey, great to be with you. And I think this is exciting that you're interviewing various commissioners to maybe open the door into our world a little bit. Uh, it's, a, it's a different world. There's not very many of us if you put the numbers together because uh, there's only a finite amount of conferences. But, uh, you know, my job, Joey, is to really... Um, kind of be the 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 one that keeps it all together and uh, that's a pretty broad way of saying it but uh you know that's kind of what I do um I'm the neutral person in the middle um I'm the one that's kind of uh moving the parts around uh, when it comes to scheduling or coming to our tournaments or uh just operations of the league so uh, you know my role is to be a linchpin I guess is what that would be another way to say it uh just to uh, keep the keep the train on the tracks and uh uh, that that's a it's a pretty big job when you have 12 member schools in your conference you got 12 different presidents you got 12 different athletic directors and then of course a a ton of coaches so um, but it's a it's a role that I've really enjoyed I'm going into my 22nd year uh, with the GPAC which is exciting and uh, no two years are ever the same and uh, that's probably the beauty of the job is that it's different each and every day you know, I, I thought about that two decades on the job, which is really, I mean, in 2024, it's almost unheard of to have a position for, for that long. So congratulations, I guess, in order to an, to an extent, when, when you look at that and you look back and now it's been a while since, since you've uh, assumed that position as, as the lead man of the conference, did you ever think at an earlier point in your career, you know, I'd, I'd like to be a conference commissioner someday. No, I, I, I don't think so. I, I think it was, uh, it kind of landed on me um, in a very odd way. Um, I was at a member school uh, when the GPAC started, which is our 25th anniversary year as well, coming up here. Um, so I was at a member school. I was at Dort uh, when Dort was uh, being courted for the conference. So I was a part of the process, if you will, um, that I've now led multiple times in our league of, of uh, bringing in new members. Um, I was always intrigued, though, uh, by what commissioners did. Uh, even back into my days at Dort in the South Dakota Iowa Conference, I always thought, you know, commissioners have a lot to do, and uh, it, it's a great role. Um, so, but did I ever think I would do it? I, I don't know. I think that's uh, probably a little bit of a stretch, but it it, it kind of just uh, worked out that way. Um, I ended up leaving college athletics um, after the the one year that Dort was in the GPAC, that first year, 2000, 2001. Uh, I got married, moved to Sioux City, did some various other things along the way. Um, and then I had an opportunity to come back and be the sports information director for the conference uh, back in 2002. Um, our former commissioner, Paul Clark, uh, who did a great job of getting us started 25 years ago, asked me if that's a role I wanted to take on. And that was kind of my wheelhouse. Um, at the time. And we're talking a time where the internet and social media were a totally different animal. I mean, it just wasn't what it is today. But uh, one thing led to another. Paul left for another opportunity and uh, he put in a good word for me. And uh, everything kind of aligned at that time that I got this opportunity uh, to be with the GPAC. And fast forward 22 years later, uh, I love it. And uh, uh, it's fit me well. Um, I'm, I'm not a too high or I'm not a too low guy. I think my personality kind of fits the job. You, you kind of have to have that when you're a commissioner. And yeah. I think that my schools and uh, league members appreciate that. I want to talk about your your league members then. Your conference is uh, maybe not necessarily unique, but there is a, a certain pattern or style to it because it's made up of, of 12 member institutions that are faith-based institutions as well and, and, and throughout. And the membership's changed some over the course of the past 25 years, actually heading into 24-25. It's going to be a new look this coming year as well. But talk a little bit about that and, and that faith-based perspective. Yeah, we are a faith-based league. Uh, we have been since our origins. Um, you know, it's important to us. Uh, we feel like the mission behind our schools is as important as the the games on the court or on the field. Um, and, you know, you can't measure everybody's uh, faith-based 
uh, level necessarily. Uh, it's it's hard to do that. We have Catholic schools, we have Lutheran schools, we have Presbyterian, we have Reformed, we have Christian Reformed. I mean, we're all over the map and what we have, but but yet there is that similarity and that that common goal uh, behind the scenes that uh, I think that our student athletes are uh, as much learning about life and uh, what what they can do in God's world um, after graduation as they are scoring points or you know, having touchdowns or hitting home runs, which we're going to talk about in a little bit with Joey Grabanski. So um, I think it's it's been a really good thing for our league. And it's a, it's a tenant that we've stuck to. Um, you know, it, it puts us in a little bit of a box. I'll be honest with you. I mean, in terms of geography, there's not a, you know, an infinite amount of faith-based institutions. Waldorf coming into our league this year, certainly coming back from being a for-profit, uh, did meet that, uh, going more back to their Lutheran foundation. So um, it's been good for us. And, uh, I think that, uh, that common goal and common mission has served us very, very well. With, with, uh, those leagues and, or excuse me, those members, uh, a lot going on, obviously all the time. And you were talking about, you know, kind of being that linchpin. I, I look back to your time in communications and being the, the SID, as you talked about as well, but really that seems to be a part of who you are all the way around. And uh, you, you get to, I guess, communicate with the folks around you and the folks in the conference and, and beyond on a regular basis, a daily radio program. How about that? I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Talk about that a little bit, because I know that's not something that all commissioners do or not only have the time for, but, but could do. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not a long program, but, um, Oh, I don't even know how many years ago it's been now. Maybe it's well over 10. It could be close to 15. It might even be 20 years. I don't even remember. But I started what uh, we call the GPAC report. And um, I do record it uh, every night uh, here in my home. Um, and I send it out to the radio stations around our conference. And it's a two-minute daily program that allows me to talk about the conference. Uh, players of the week, big matchups, conference tournaments, you know, kind of everything that you would talk about, the big news of the league. And it allows me to kind of package the, the story, if you will. And they just air it. And uh, the, the stations love it uh, because they get a chance to get pre-built programming and maybe they don't have to go out and look for all the GPAC headlines. I'll, I'll kind of, uh, in a two-minute version, uh, give them what, what they want and they can just uh, load it into the computer and play it. On uh, football Saturdays in the fall, I do a four-minute program called the GPAC Football Saturday Report where we look at the week past and the week ahead. Um, and that's been a really popular program. That's on almost every pregame uh, in the conference in some way, shape, or form. And uh, it's just kind of their uh, 30 minutes before kickoff standard that the, the GPAC Football Saturday report comes on. And I don't know where I got the idea. Um, probably listening to uh, Nebraska football games. I'm a Husker fan. And, um, you know, like, you know, there's all these segments that are a part of their 62-hour pregame show every week that they do. And I thought, well, why can't the conference just have a – a segment that you know the radio stations within the league can use how they see fit. So it's been a great deal for us, and uh, it's on a lot of stations. I think we're up to nine around the the league, uh, varying markets. It airs at various times of the day. Sometimes I hear people say, "Oh, I hear it first thing in the morning," or some people say, "I hear it in the afternoon." It doesn't really matter, and I do have to be aware of that when I'm recording it that uh, it's going to be on at different times of the day. But uh, it's been a good thing for the conference. I have to tell you, I've, I've been a, a broadcaster specifically for a team uh, for, well, more than a decade. And it's nice having something like that football-wise to be part of the pregame package as well. So much going on, really so much to talk about. And to be able to drop something like that in four minutes and, and take care of business around the conference, that's pretty cool as well. That, that That's pretty helpful. Yeah, it's, it, it is, you know, and. I've been a broadcaster too. And, you know, uh, I know how important four minutes can be sometimes just to catch your breath. So if I can give them that opportunity to uh, play something that they don't have to worry about, I'm happy to do it. So, uh, and it keeps me a little bit into it a little, you know, you, you don't know, you never lose the radio bug, Joey. It's always there, but uh, I don't really want to go back to doing games per se. I also do some ESPN work uh, with national tournaments. Uh, I still get to put a headset on a couple times a year with women's volleyball and women's basketball. But for the most part, my radio days are behind me. 
Well, I agree with you. And that's, I listen, I praise God for the opportunity to get to do this uh, on a, on a regular basis, because just that broadcasting, yeah, there, there's something to it. And I like getting to fill in every now and again, get the call. Hey, listen, can you come in and, and call a game for us this week? Whatever the case may be, that's been a lot of fun. We're visiting now with Corey Westra, who is the commissioner of the Great Plains Athletic Conference. And I, I look, I, I talked about the the 12 member schools and, and getting to talk about some of the things that they've been doing. I mean, there's a national championship this past year. You, you were talking about Dort. Well, the defenders won the title in women's basketball. Northwestern, by the way. Uh, I mean, really, really, it was very, very good and then came up just a little bit short in football and volleyball within just a few days of one another. But pretty cool to play for the national championship in two sports like that in the fall. So, I mean, there's been a lot to celebrate this season. There has. Uh, you know, talking about Dort women's basketball was really a special deal. Um, you know, you got a little sense of pride being an alum. And my first job was broadcasting Dort women's basketball, you know, and uh, I can guarantee you they weren't quite national championship uh, level back when I did that. But boy, have they built that program into something special. And uh, Coach Harmson has done an amazing job. And it was their 50th anniversary season uh, yeah. on top of winning that. So, you know, yeah, Hollywood script wise, you probably couldn't write it any better to do that. And uh, just a bunch of great student athletes. Uh, very diverse group of kids uh, from kind of all over uh, that just had that, you know, magic mix. Then they got, they got to put that run together and uh, they probably a little pressure on them. Uh, you know, they were, they were pretty good the last few years. And I think people were going, you know, this could be a year. And, you know, so you have to carry that over you a little bit and they handled it so well. And uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. And then Northwestern. Yeah. You know, within a span of just three, four weeks uh, played for the volleyball title in Sioux city for the women, never been that far, never been to a, semifinal before uh, much less a national championship and then to go back to Durham with their football team and play Kaiser again uh, it was a uh, second year in a row for the Seahawks and the Red Raiders and Dustin Wilkie the commissioner of the Sun and I had a joke that we now have a split so maybe we need a we need a rubber game at some point I don't know what year that will come but uh, uh, you know a lot of fun uh, great when your teams perform well in the national stage and make deep runs into the national tournament. Uh, we and, and we did that in other sports as well. So a lot of fun to represent our conference at the NAI level that way. Absolutely. I, let, let me ask you then about that too. I mean, I know that, that you serve the NAI in uh, probably one or more capacities. In, in what roles do you serve at the, the national level? From a commissioner hat perspective, um, this past year I went back on to the uh, NAIA National Administrative Council, and I was on that council for 12 years, and eventually they, they they found a way I couldn't be on there anymore because I either had termed out of my conference role or other councils that I was a part of, so I, I had to finally go off, and then an opportunity came to go back on, and I did, and uh, that the NAC, as we call that, the National Administrative Council, is kind of the, the, the worker bees of the NAIA below the presidents. Um, we have championships, we have student athlete experience, we have rules and awards and statistics, all those things that you you know you think about running the NAI fall under the NAC. So I'm back on there. I'm on the championships committee. Uh, I'm just a committee member. I'm not a chair anymore. I, I've, my, I've done that role before. I'm just happy to have our voice in the conference uh, be back there uh, from a commissioner. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier in our uh, program here today, there's only a a finite amount of us in the NAIA. So, you know, we try to keep that balance on that National Administrative Council. So I was happy to come on. So that's one role I serve. Another role I serve is I am the co-tournament director for the women's volleyball and the women's basketball tournaments here in Sioux City. Um, and I've done that for over 25 years for basketball. I think we're going into 28 now. Uh, and then I've done it for over 18 for volleyball, 10 years behind basketball, whatever the numbers are on that. So um, get to wear that hat here in Sioux City, work with our local crew, uh, bring the NAI, you know, to the middle of our conference, really, and just uh, put on two championships that we enjoy immensely at the Tyson Event Center each and every year. And in past years, we've hosted softball here, we've hosted uh, wrestling here, but right now we have women's basketball and women's volleyball as kind of the highlights of our conference being right in the middle each and every December and March. I have to tell you that that is a goal of mine to be able to be in Sioux City for a women's volleyball tournament at some point, actually for a women's basketball tournament as well. But I'd, I'd really like to be up there and and be a part of that someday. So that that is one of the goals I want to let you know right off the bat. Uh, 
Concordia won the all sports trophy this year. So congratulations to the Bulldogs and uh, coming away with the GPAC all sports trophy. It's been quite a year for baseball. And specifically, you mentioned Joey Grabansky earlier. Joey Grabansky, Jaden Quinn, named as the co-players of the year for the GPAC this year in baseball, rightfully so. And it's it's not just been one year. I mean, the last couple of years for those guys have just been fantastic. Grabansky may be getting a, a few more headlines right now. And, and again, rightfully so. He's now the NAIA home run king, all-time leader in home runs in the NAIA. Commissioner, talk about that and what that something like that would would mean for a conference. Yeah, uh, it was it was fun to follow Joey's career. Um, I knew he hit a lot of home runs, uh, and all of a sudden uh, he was knocking on the doorstep of breaking the record, and and did it here in Sioux City. Actually, did it at uh, Mercy One Field, Lewis and Clark Park, where the Explorers play. Uh, which is a big yard, and I uh, was kind of joking with some people. I'm like, boy, if he he's going to earn one if he can get it out of that place. Well, I think he hit like three that weekend. I mean, the guy the guy's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, Joey's uh, Joey's taken that all in stride. Uh, he is. He, I, I don't know Joey well, but he's kind of a gentle giant. Um, but boy, can he hit the baseball and the RBIs kind of come with hitting home runs. So that was another record that he got there as well. And uh, just fun to watch that progression. And uh, you know, Concordia. Uh, made a good run. I got into the opening round, as did Doan um, this year in baseball. It was a lot of fun to have Doan and Concordia play for the GPAC championship. It was, you know, it was kind of Concordia esque that night. Uh, uh, Joey hit a home run. Uh, Quinn hit a home run. Um, and you know, when they do that, it's uh, Bulldog baseball, right? So um, fun to watch our baseball teams this year succeed, but especially to have that uh, added headline of the the home run watch uh, for 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 Grabansky. When, when we talk about conferences now, and obviously NCAA Division I is going to get uh, you know a lot of national attention, and the, the word conference realignment has been thrown around so many times. I mean, when I was young, you know, I never thought about anything like that. But, but now since the, the turn of the century, millennium, I mean, you just get more and more conference realignment all the time. Well, it doesn't just happen at that upper level. It happens throughout college athletics and, and you all have experienced conference realignment and, and will again have a, a, a little bit of a, of a tweak to the, the membership heading in Jamestown, moving to division two, stepping over to the North star for this next season, Waldorf coming in again, fitting that model of faith-based institutions as well. But it's, it's not just the institutions. I mean, there's realignment that goes on even on another level. Uh, the, uh, the GPAC had been sponsoring men's volleyball that's going to phase out with the end of the 23-24 athletic year, but you're bringing in women's wrestling. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, you just said a lot there. I mean, that, that's a lot for a conference to go through in a year, uh, to, to drop a sport, add a sport, drop a member, add a member. I mean, that's a that's a pretty full year <laughs> right there. Well, I really uh, hope we have somebody in charge that's been around for yeah, two decades. I guess, yeah, <laughs> yeah, good for me, right? Uh, no, it, it, it went well. Um, you know, maybe I'll take them in two parts. The membership side first. Um, you know, Waldorf. Well, the, the, going back to the North Star, um, you know, they lost some members and their numbers were going down. And Waldorf had made that switch back to being faith based and uh, became a pretty good candidate for us. So that discussion really started first. Uh, about adding Waldorf, and uh, and then we learned about Jamestown's intentions to go Division Two, and that kind of came right after it. Uh, it was really quick timeline there. So uh, with Jamestown exiting and Waldorf coming in, our membership numbers stay the same, which you know is is nice from a logistics standpoint. Our our schedules don't really change. Uh, we just have to change out members and those types of things. So. We've gone through all that this year. We're really excited to get Waldorf on the field courts this year. Uh, they're really excited to be a part of our league. It's a, it's a brand new market for us. Forest City, Iowa, North Central Iowa, um, you know, really close to Minnesota. We hope that maybe this will give us a little Minnesota exposure, uh, being Rochester kind of right there and some of those TV stations and so on and so forth. So excited for that. In losing Jamestown, we lost a men's volleyball program, and uh, we became a little volatile because we were only at the minimum number there. And uh, the, the long story short is, is that our two remaining teams in the GPAC, Dort and Morningside, uh, got an opportunity to join the Heart of America, and the Heart of America is going to go to two divisions in men's volleyball. So that'll be good. Uh, the competition will be great. The schedule will be a lot easier, uh, just built in in that. So, well, you don't want to 
uncheck the box of having a sport necessarily, uh, it worked out really, really well. And then women's wrestling, uh, we grew to the point where our numbers favored us to add that. Uh, Jamestown had it, uh, but Waldorf does too. So uh, they kind of slid in for each other. And uh, I'm really excited about women's wrestling and where it could go. I, I'm in Iowa. Uh, that's where I'm based. And in Iowa, we added girls wrestling three years ago. And it has just ballooned out. It was one big class. Now it's going to two classes. And I mean, they can't even find facilities to hold these things in. I mean, it's it's exploded. So I think women's wrestling will do well for us as a, a next opportunity on the college level for those high schoolers who want to continue the sport. So that's a lot right there, uh, sports sponsorship and, and uh, membership sponsorship in one year. But I think we've come out on the other end very, very well. Yeah, and and, and rest, I was gonna, I'm glad you mentioned that. Wrestling in Iowa at all levels is just, it's, it's top notch. It's a big and, deal. Uh, no, it is a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> no two yep. ways around it's, that. It's a big deal. Yeah, it's loud and fans support it. And uh, you know, our men's wrestling has been really strong. You know, and and the NAI took a hit in men's wrestling a few years ago with a lot of schools dropping it. But uh, we have nine uh, in our league, and it's done very well. And we do well at the nationals with those kids and their weight classes. And uh, we had a couple of events this past year in Sioux City, duels days we call them. And uh, you know, people want to come out and watch that. And uh, you know, we scheduled it well that the culminating duel was essentially the, the conference championship. And uh, that's always exciting when you end with uh, with that on the line. And uh, so, yeah, you know, sometimes you think about the sports of a league, you, you know, you kind of automatically go to football and basketball and maybe women's volleyball to a certain extent. But boy, those other sports have done very, very well for us. Well, Commissioner, I want to I want to take just a little bit more of your time and ask ask a couple more questions here. And I think one thing in particular, I'd I'm just curious, is there anything that, that you do that, you know, most people wouldn't think a, a conference commissioner might do? <laughs> um, well, I, I have done some uh, preaching uh, over the years. Uh, I led our church through a search committee for a pastor. And uh, in finding a pastor, we had some vacancy. Uh, so I did I did give some messages there. That might surprise some people. Maybe not. They probably think, well, you, you like to talk. So that's not <laughs> a big deal. Um, but I, I did do that. Um, I ran a youth volleyball uh, side of a youth sports facility for a few years. Um, I have a pretty high passion for volleyball. And we opened a youth sports facility in Sioux City. And I helped kind of get that off the ground. I've handed off the reins on that. But I had two daughters that play one that played volleyball. She's in college now, but one that does continue to. So probably a little passion there with with, uh, with uh, daughters in the system. And uh, maybe people wouldn't know this, but uh, I know I, I know a little too much about dance because I'm a dance dad as well. So uh, uh, there. Uh, I, uh, so when I go to our cheer and dance championships, I know just enough to be deadly, but not enough to really know what I'm doing. Um, but uh, there you go. I gave you three, Joey. I don't know. You asked for one, and uh, th th those okay. are varying things. I, I, you know what? I, those are things I, that I've done as well, and and actually being a dance dad. So uh, I'm I'm married to a choreographer, and uh, one of mine uh, danced at the at the NAI level, was a two time All American and a national champion as well, and now she's a choreographer. So yeah, I I agree. I like the way you said it. I know just enough, just enough to uh, to know what I'm You're talking not about. Enough. Not enough. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, then, let, let, if if you would give us a commercial, then for the G Pack. I mean, I know that uh, student athletes, uh, you know, that there there are so many that are that are wonderful in the conference. But if uh, if any were watching this right now, you know, invite them to to come out and be a part of the G Pack. Yeah, I, you know, I think we're a special group. Um, you know, we we're, we're super competitive. Um, so if you know, if you want to advance. In your sport, whatever that is, I think you will find a place for you on the competitive side of it. But I also think our schools have a tremendous mission and tremendous uh, uh, programming uh, through their majors. Um, you know, hopefully there's a place for you. And, uh, you know, we build student athletes. Um, we want to be champions in the classroom. We want to be champions in our communities. And, you know, we want to be champions uh, on the court uh, or on the field. And you know, that's really what we do. We talk about academic and athletic excellence. Uh, you know, if, if you're just coming to us to play, uh, that, that's probably not a fit. You know, uh, we're about academic and athletic excellence. Uh, we want you to, 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 to have both. And, 
you know, my, my greatest joy is seeing where our kids go. Like, like a Joey Gerbanski, you know, where's Joey going to end up in five to 10 years? Is he going to, you know, what's he going to end up doing? Um, you know, I walk in and uh, former GPEC student athletes are now doctors or they're now nurses or they're uh, successful businessmen or businesswomen. You know, that's the fun part about it. And then next generation, right? I'm 22 years in and now I've got, you know, and they're my age, but, you know, uh, uh, people my age coming with their kids and seeing that next generation go through and, 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 and experience what intercollegiate athletics is about at the small college level. So, um, you know, we, we, we compete like crazy, but we're really a league of some pretty awesome schools, Joey. And it's, it's a joy to talk about them and uh, give us a look. We've got a lot of different campuses that you can go visit. Uh, we're, we're all over uh, the Midwest here, three states, Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota. Give us a shot. If you want to see what we're all about, we'd love to, you know, give you that opportunity to, to be a part of what we do in GPAC nation. Fantastic. Well, I, I appreciate that commissioner. And I'm very, very thankful for you taking some time commissioners week, getting started today with Corey Wester from the great plains athletic conference and commissioner. It's, it's, it's a privilege to get to cover the schools in your league. And again, I'm thankful for you taking some time with us today. Yeah. Remind all my colleagues that I went first. Okay. Um, <laughs> And that they owe me something for going first. I don't know. You know, we're 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 a fun group. Uh, we're pretty competitive with ourselves, but uh, they're my best friends. I'll be honest with you. I love getting together. What we get together in the fall in Kansas City. We always get together at convention and then on the Zoom meetings occasionally as well. They're my best friends, and uh, we're all we're you know we're all marching to the same beat, and that's uh, keeping NAI athletics alive. And uh, NAI athletics is awesome. Uh, we apologize for nothing, and uh, you know. Whether it's our league or whoever you're going to talk to down the road here during Commissioner's Week, uh, we, we're pretty excited about what, what we can do in the NAI and in our uh, respective conferences. <laughs>